This brief video is meant to walk through one of the homework problems on WAMAP, where you have been given a data set and asked to construct a two by two contingency table from that data set. Uh, I'll demonstrate two methods for this. So let me first show you the problem. So this is the problem that we're asked to look at in WAMAP. So we've been given uh, survey data, looking at college graduates. Um, there's a total of 148 people from the larger data set that are reported here. Uh, and it focuses on those who reported being employed at the time of the interview. And the first variable X records the college type. One indicates private, two indicates public. Uh, the variable Y in this case indicates employment status. Uh, zero is coded as part-time and one is coded as full-time. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna copy this. So I'll highlight all of the data that has been given to us. I'll go ahead and copy this. And what I want to do now is I want to paste this into Excel. Mm -hmm. So here I have an Excel sheet. I'm going to go ahead and paste. And fortunately, everything copies nicely from the web browser into Microsoft Excel. And what I want to do now is I want to change the nature of the data so it's easier for me to understand what was what. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the data and recode it. Uh, if I look back, I can see that the if I look back quickly, I can see that uh, for the variable X, one stands for private and two stands for public. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of the columns for X. So I'm highlighting each column holding down the command key on the Mac. And I'm gonna go to edit, find, I'll choose replace. I wanna replace the entire cell. So if the cell has the value one, I want it to replace that with the word private. And if Excel has the value two in these columns, I want it to replace it with uh, public. Okay, so all I've done now is I've just replaced all the information for my X's to be indicate private or public. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. So I believe zero stands for um, part-time for the variable Y and one stands for full-time. So I will go edit, find, replace. So again, one, so zero stands for part-time. Replace all. And one stands for full-time. Mm -hmm. So I've recoded my data so it has the actual labels, makes it a little easier for me to follow. So there's two options that I have available now to do this calculation. Um, first thing is uh, I could take each of these columns and I could essentially move, take this column, these two columns, I could cut this and then paste it below this column. And then I could do that for the next two pairs of columns. So I'll select everything in these two columns. I will cut. I will paste this below the next pair of columns. And then I can do it again for my final column, final set of columns. So I end up with all of my data. Edit, cut, I'll paste it here. So now all of my data has been stored in uh, the, just the first two columns. And what I can do now is I can highlight these columns. And if I sort first by the uh, first variable, all the privates are listed first, private college respondees are first, and all the public college respondees are second. And now if I hit the tab key, it will put me to the head of the second column. If I sort again, this will now put all of the full-time individuals first, uh, followed by all of the part-time individuals. But the advantage here is that by doing this, I've now grouped all of the part-time, full-time people. So this is the entire set of part-time, full-time. I'll color code this with a different color so it stands out a little bit. In the same way, if I go down a little further, I have all the public and full-time people. code this. 
And then uh, same for the private part-time and the private. So here are the private part-time respondees. And here are the, the remaining set that's not highlighted as the public part-time respondees. And once I've done this, I can simply count how many are in each of these uh, highlighted regions. So for example, in this region, there's a total of 54. I can see it, it highlights, it, it moves rather quickly, but if I look up here, as I, as I move to the full selection, I see that there are 54 rows that have been selected here. So I can use that information to count how many of the um, people responded. Now, uh, that's one approach. Uh, the reason why I'm not so keen on using that is because it actually changes the nature of the data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo what I've done here and put everything back into the, the original full co four column structure that we had. So this was has, as I had the data when I copied it in. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the concatenation function. So the concatenation function simply takes uh, text in one cell and connects it to text in another cell. So what I'm gonna do in column J, I'm gonna say, and I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see more clearly what I'm actually typing at this point. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll also shrink these columns to make them take up a little less space. So in column J, I'm going to go and tell it to look in cell A2, and then I'm going to use the ampersand, that's the concatenation function. And if I ampersand that with cell, uh, the, well, the value in B2, that just puts private full time together, that, that makes it a little hard to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to insert another little piece of text in here. I'll put in a little colon. I'll put, in, I'll put in a colon in here. So what I've inserted is ampersand, double quotes, colon, double quotes ampersand. So this is gonna connect A2 with this, this string of text that has just a colon and then B2. Now, if I copy this down for the full length of my data, so down to row 38 in my case, so if I've copied this down. Now I have private and full time. Uh, uh, so now each, each response has been coded as, as a text string. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna skip a column each time I copy this. So what I'll do is I'll highlight column J I'll copy, I'll skip column K and I'll go to column L and I'll paste. And I'll do that again for every other column. And this then will update automatically and this will grab each of the four pairs of columns. Now my data essentially is stored in columns J through P. So what I'm gonna come over here is I know that one of the options I have is private, let's spell it correctly, colon, full time. One of my options is private colon part-time. Then I have the choice for public colon full-time and public colon part-time. Now I can simply use the count if function. So I'm gonna say equals count if. I'll tell it to look in columns J through P and I want it to look for the value that I've typed in here in cell R2. And because I've highlighted that I've selected the columns, I can just go ahead and copy this. And if I paste this down into the next two cells, next three cells, this will update. So I now know that there are 54 respondents that uh, went to a private institution are currently full-time employed. There are 55 participants that went to public institutions and are employed full-time. I hope this brief demonstration was useful. Thanks very much.